Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so we truly give God the great glory. Amen. Come on, you said, can you celebrate him one more time? Listen, amen. Any first time visitors, just wave your hand if you just lift your hand. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, I see you there. God bless you. Come on. Give a round of applause. Now, now, when I was coming up in the apostolic church, they would have the person stand up, give their name, give their blood type, social security number, and all that. <laughs> Amen. But we just thank God for you. Amen. And, and we didn't know who you would be, but we knew it would be someone wonderful. Can you give a round of applause? God bless you. Welcome. Welcome. You know, I keep telling people the house of God is where everybody should be able to come and worship him. You know, when I was when I was real, when I was real legalistic and judgmental, you know, I used to judge people's praise. You know, Sister Michelle, I would come in the house of God and I knew some stuff about some people. I'm like, what you lifting your hand for? You need to be at the altar. But what I found out is the Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And the Lord said, no, I want everybody to give me the glory. I don't care where they're coming from. I want you to still recognize that I am the God that healed thee. And so we thank God for it. Amen. Good to have Lady Net. Amen. She fanning that fan. Come on and fan it again. It was looking good. Go on. Oh. <laughs> no, we thank God for you. Listen, it's Friends and Family Day. I'm going to give you the word. We're going to go into the fellowship hall. We have some food for you there, all kinds of food. And this is our first one. We're going to try to do it monthly. Amen. We want all of you guys who love cooking, love baking, and all of that. It's wonderful to get together, amen, and fellowship. You get to know other people who are in the faith as well. And so it allows for you to kind of grow in Christ. If you would be so kind to turn to Hebrews chapter 11. And if you see me squinting my eyes, it's because I left my glasses. But it's going to be all right. I told them to turn the lights up, so it's, it's going to be okay. Hebrews 11. Eleven and verse eleven. Now this morning at the eight forty-five service, I preached a message called "The Strength of Faith." So you can go back on Facebook and watch that later on. Verse eleven. When you have it, can you say Amen? Let's read it together. It says, "Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength." to receive seed, uh, to conceive, I'm sorry, conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had what? Promise. Verse number 12. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Can you say amen? Now let's turn over to um, uh, Genesis chapter seven, uh, excuse me, 18. Genesis 18. Chapter 18, verse number 9. Let's read together. It says, And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall what? have a son and Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him verse 11 now Abraham and Sarah what, what were they now they were old y'all said that with some strength 
they were old and well stricken in age and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying after I am wax old shall I have pleasure my Lord being old also and the Lord said unto Abraham wherefore did Sarah laugh saying shall I of a surety bear a child which am uh, old verse number 14 is anything too hard for the Lord come on let's read that again is anything too hard for the Lord keep reading at the time appointed I will return unto thee according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son verse 15 then Sarah denied saying I laugh not for she was afraid and he said nay but thou didst laugh turn over to Matthew Matthew chapter 1. Verse number 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. Everyone reading. The son of David. The son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. And Isaac begot Jacob. And Jacob begot Judas and his brethren. And Judas begot Phares, and Phares Zara, and of Tamar, and Phares begot Esram, and Esram begot Aram, and Aram begot Amenadad, and Amenadad begot Nason, and Nason begot Salmon, and Salmon begot Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begot Obed of Ruth, and Obed begot Jesse. And Jesse begot David the king, and David the king begot Solomon, of her that had been the wife of Urias. And Solomon begot Reboam, and Reboam begot Abia, and Abia begot Asa, and Asa begot Josephat, and Josephat begot Joram, and Joram begot Ozias, and Ozias begot Joatham, and Joatham begot Achaz, and Achaz begot Ezekias, and Ezekias begot Manassas, and Manassas begot Amon, and Amon begot Josiah, and Josiah begot Jehoiakim, excuse me, Jeconias, and his brethren. At the time they were carried away to Babylon, and after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias. Um, begot Salathiel, and Salathiel begot Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begot Abiad, and Abiad begot Eliakim, and Eliakim begot Azor, and Azor begot Sadok, and Sadok begot Achim, and Achim begot Eliud, and Eliud begot Eleazar, and Eleazar begot Magdan, and Magdan begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Can you say amen? amen. This morning I want to talk to you about one act of faith. One act of faith. Everyone say it. Ready? Go. One act of faith. Say it again. One act of faith. What's interesting about the story of Sarah, I explained this morning, is that Paul, in the book of Hebrews, he uses two ideas using two words. One is by, and the other one is through. He says, by faith, which is to denote that faith is the one acting. Faith is the one doing. Then he says, through faith, which means after I possess it, the Lord now wants me to continue to go through a process of faith to get me to my destination. So we are always being impacted by the by faith and also the through faith. You all know that faith cometh by 
and hearing by the word of God. And so the Lord is calling us to faith because it is the currency that he gives us in order to make a transaction in the earth realm. If you want something from God, it's going to be by faith. It's not going to be by your emotion. You can cry all night long, but if faith is not in the middle of those tears, God will not respond. You can feel a lot of pain, but God is not responding to pain. He's responding to faith. Some atheists and people that are struggling with their faith, they say things like, if there really was a God, why is there so much hurt in the world? Well, there's a few answers for that. The first one is that sin was released into the world, and therefore sin cometh death. And that process of death means that we don't always think the right way, don't always say the right thing, and we have desires that are wicked and away from the will of God, and God gives man free will to do what he'd like with his own body, with his own disposition, with his own thoughts. So this is the reason why there's a lot of hurt in the earth realm. It's not good enough for you to have your stuff, now you want my stuff. It would be a happy world, right? If I could just have my stuff, you have your stuff, and just because I had a little more than you had, you wouldn't think that you had the right to take my stuff, all right? Because then we have people now taking out the gat and showing them where it's at because the police don't show up in time, so now we have to defend ourselves, and this would be a wonderful world if I could leave a dime behind and nobody would touch it because they know it's not theirs. But because of sin in the earth realm, men have wicked impulsions, wicked desires, wicked thoughts. And so there is hearth in the earth realm. But there's also something significant to know is that God is only responding to faith. So he wants people to believe in him. He doesn't want their money. He doesn't want, listen, he doesn't even want your body at first. The only thing he wants is your faith. Later on, he gives us a command to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. But he does not want your body without faith. He doesn't want you to come down to the altar without faith. He doesn't want you to be baptized without faith. Are you hearing me? He don't even want you to seek for the Holy Spirit without faith. Everything you're going to get in God is by faith, you know. And so sometimes I, when I do come to the church house and I go into my office, I have a few, few little um, writings from Bishop Henry L. Johnson and Mother Magnolia, and I, I pulled a couple out. Um, this one is from 1951. This is Mother Magnolia Johnson in 1951, and she is writing um, a paper, and it's good to see Angela Boyce, my sister here. Can you give her a round of applause? One of the founding members of Bethesda. Um, but what's uh, interesting, oh, thank you. Somebody got some real readers. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I can see clearly now. <laughs> no. Um, so this is this is Mother Magnolia, um, the the one of the founding mother of our church, the the wife of Bishop Henry O. Johnson. She says, "I came to Enon in the in the fall of uh, winter season, uh, nineteen hundred and fifty one." to learn to be a more efficient servant of Jesus Christ and to get a clear understanding and knowledge of his precious word. I was assigned many subjects and one was music, of which I determined important and a very serious study for it gives us the ability to be able to praise God the right way God through his heavenly praises, as Psalm 7 and 17 says. In preparation of praising God through songs, and I counted this course to be vital to my development. She goes on to write about her impression of the teacher, and she writes about how at first she was bored in the class, <laughs> but then she took to the class and 
for those of you who had the, the blessing to meet uh, Mother Magnolia, know that she was a praiser. She was a wonderful praising woman of God. And then I poured out this paper by Bishop Henry L. Johnson. It says, Enon Bible School, 251 North 20th Street in Columbus, Ohio. And so, oh, oh boy, I forgot we got a Buckeye over here. <laughs> and he has a, let me find this real quick. Oh, there it is. This, this one was funny. Yeah, there it is. So Bishop is writing um, he, these papers, and in one of his papers here, he begins to write about um, his birth <laughs> and write about how he was as a child. And so um, at the end of it, uh, this is what it says. He says, I had a very, uh, the vigor and a better outlook on life is what prompted me to want to move into ministry. So that prompted me and I looked forward to set um, a goal in my life. Even though I was but a child, I had a motto. I wanted to do all the good I could for not only my parents, but for everyone I called. This was, this is, these kind of writings are very dear to me because it gives us kind of a peek into the mind of the patriarchs. Those who came before us, who did great sacrifice, he would later leave P.L. Scott, who is an incredible, powerful bishop in our history. He would come out into the plains of the Central Valley and he would establish in Hanford first, Bethesda Apostolic Church. From there, they would move to Rose and Grove. From Rose and Grove, they would move to Church Street. From Church Street, they would move to White's Bridge. From White's Bridge, they would move to this very building that you all are sitting here. But it took for an act of faith. It took for Bishop, when he was called to come to this area, to say, yes, Lord, I will go. Literally, the chair you are sitting on is because of someone's act of faith. Oh, I'm going to have to work this morning, but I'm going to make sure you get the point. It's, it's, it's amazing how this generation is like living a world unto themselves. It's like no one has come before them and nobody is coming behind them. It's like no sacrifice had to happen in order for you to be here. So we end up being a very ungrateful people. We end up being a people that all we want to talk about is what's wrong in the world. When none of us in here would like to leave this world right now, we're fighting every day to try to stay alive. As much hurt and harm as there is in the world, I want you to know that God is still the God of the universe. He says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But what he is looking for is an act of faith. He's looking for somebody who's willing to trust him to understand that if your one act of faith is executed in the earth realm the right way, it could send a ripple effect that goes so far past you. I hope I'm talking to somebody today. It's like we used to do when we were younger. We would go down to a body of water and we would take a little rock and we wanted to try to make the rock skip. If you throw the rock and just allow it to fall into the water, what happens? Ripples take place. And we used to try to count how many ripples would come from us dropping the rock in the water. One drop of the rock would create ripples that would continue as far out as the weight of that rock would happen. I want you to understand that when you drop your faith into the hands of God, he will cause ripple effects to take place. 
I said he will cause ripple effects to take place. Listen, I, like you, sometimes get discouraged. I say, Lord, why am I doing all of this? Why am I working so hard? Why am I teaching? Why am I preaching? That Lord, I just told them that, and they went and did the very thing they wasn't supposed to do. What good is it? He said, Tobias, stop looking at the end result. Just work on your one act of faith. Your one act act of faith has nothing to do with the outside. It has to do with what God has given you. Can I talk to you for a minute here? You, you see, sometimes we make it about outside pressure. And if any of you are in this church only because of outside pressure, I want you to know that won't last. You cannot live on emotion. You cannot live on outside pressure. Some of you guys, you know, listen, we always laugh about, you know, Oprah Winfrey talking about all my life I had to fight. But that's a real thing. Some of you guys are living your life trying to prove somebody else wrong. And I want you to know that's not going to last. Because you got all the energy because you want to prove your mama was wrong. You want to prove I'm coming out of poverty. And if I can't, if nobody's going to help me, I'm going to do it myself. That only lasts so long. That is your human strength operating. And God is saying, when you're called by me, I need you now to move out of your physical strength into our spiritual strength, which is your faith. I'm, I'm working something today. I, I got to move out of my physical strength and into my spiritual strength. And that is my faith. Because your faith is sustainable. Because your faith didn't come from you. God is the one that gave you the faith. And because God is the one that gave it to you, he is the one now that has to bring it to pass. I'm so glad that I live a life where I don't have to bring my own promises to pass. Because God is the one that gave it to me, he is the one now that protects it. The reason why you got into that car and made it to that house safely is because there's a word out on your life. The reason why it didn't take you out and somebody else it took them out is because there's a word out on your life. When there is a word, y'all not going to help me preach today. I want you to know it's just like one of those hitman movies. When there's a hit out, that hitman does everything they can to try to find that person. I want you to know God's word is the same word. When God speaks a word over your life, even when you're not listening to him, even when you're not praying to him, even when you're not serving him even when you won't come to church even when you won't do it God's way there's a word out on your life and he says you ain't gonna make me look like a fool I'll allow for you to go into danger seen and unseen I'll let the car flip over 20 times uh, I'll allow for you to feel rejected I'll allow tears to run down your eye just to get you to the place of faith somebody say one act of faith, one act of faith. it's one act of faith and this is what we see with Sarah everyone say Sarah Sarah is a woman of promise because she's married to a man of promise. God said to Abraham, come out of your family's house. Come out of your kindred. Come out of your country. He did not leave Sarah behind. He took Sarah with him even though she was barren. Can I talk like I feel? She was barren, but he says, I love my wife too much to leave her behind because the God that I serve must have a purpose for all of it. Everybody say he has a purpose. And sometimes, Amanda, he doesn't tell us what his purpose is. He doesn't tell you up front. He just tells you to go. And the Bible says that God spoke to Abraham and said, out of you is going to come a great nation. How? Is it going to come out of me when I don't have a child? My body is getting old. My wife is past the time of bearing. And some of you feel like your time has passed you. And I want you to know your time has not passed you because God is the God that can give you back years. I, I wish somebody would praise him about that. God is the God that can give you back time. He can give you back seconds. He can give you back months. He can give you back years. He can give you back productivity. He can make the rest of the 
this year more productive than your last 10 years if you put your faith in the hands of God. If you praise him right now, I believe God's going to do it for somebody right now. God's about to make you productive in the end of the year more than the beginning of the year. Sarah is listening to the promises coming to Abraham, which cannot happen without her. God is talking to Abraham, but this promise can't happen without her. And in a moment of depression and fear, because fear is the opposite of faith. Can y'all say that with me? Ready? Fear is the opposite of faith. She operates in fear. She sees the promise come to her husband. She's hearing God say that there's going to be a great nation. So in a moment of fear, she says, let me help God. Can I talk to some people that like to help God? She said, let me help God. God must not understand what I learned in biology class. God must not understand what I learned in my physiology class. God must not understand that I'm past the age of bearing that my uterus is not operating like it used to and my fallopian tubes are not producing and pushing out any more egg. He must not understand that. So let me help God. And she gave her maid, her maiden, to Abraham and said, maybe you're supposed to raise up seed from the maid. Some of you have turned your destiny over to the maid. You've given up on God's promise out of your life. And now you say, well, maybe God meant for my cousin and them to be blessed. I want you to know that when God puts a word out on your life, uh, I said when he puts a word out on your life, ain't nothing you can do about it, ain't your, nothing your cousins can do about it. God says, I'm the one that's gonna do it through you. But Sarah gave her over, watch this now, and allowed for her husband to raise up a child, Ishmael, outside of the will of God. Not only that, she put her marriage in jeopardy because now her husband is receiving pleasure from another woman. I got to work harder than I thought y'all was going to say amen. Amen. So, so, so now she's in a bad position. And watch this now. She blames Abraham. When clearly we found out what nothing wrong with his body. Because he went on into that tent with little hot toddy and raised up Ishmael. So clearly the issue now is with Sarah. I wish there was about 20 people that would be reflective today and say, you know what, Lord? The problem is not my mama. The problem is not my daddy. The problem is not my granny. The problem must be with me because I saw you move on their life and it all worked out. But now when it comes to me, it's all held up. And I want you to know if you can make that statement today, you are one act of faith away from God opening up the windows of heaven and pouring you out a blessing the Bible says God gives the promise the fifth time y'all stay with me he gives it the fifth time he says Abraham in a year Sarah's going to have a child he allowed for Sarah to hear the message and start laughing as I taught them in a 9 a.m. service She's laughing because she's looking at her situation. I want you to know your situation is not going to overrule revelation. You got to get revelation about your situation so you can walk in the prosperity of God. There's been times when I looked at my situation and said, ain't no way I can come out of this. But then God spoke to me in a Bible class uh, and said, you gonna be blessed. And by the time I got out, I was walking in revelation. And when you walk in revelation, things start changing with your situation. Y'all not gonna help me here. I wish there was 25 people that said my situation is about to change because I got a revelation. I'm about to 
going to walk in faith just like Sarah and I'm going to step out of Bethesda and walk into my so the Bible goes on to teach us that Sarah through faith also received strength to conceive wait a minute now initially it looked like the blessing was for her. Because she's the one with the womb that won't work. So it seems as though God is feeling sorry for her and now allowing her to produce. But God doesn't feel sorry for his children because he sees us as more than conquerors. He don't feel like little old you. I know some of you have been walking around with that low self-esteem. Little old Linda. Little old Lenny. Walking around like you little old little. I want you to know you ain't little old nothing. When God calls you into the kingdom, you big old. Big old Danny. Big old Trina. Big old Martin. Big, I said big old, big old. And I ain't talking about your physical weight. I'm talking about your weight in the spirit. When God's hand is on your life, you can throw your spiritual weight around and the devil got to back up. I wish I had just 10 people that believed it. And we put your hands together and say, my name is Big O. But the Bible, watch this. This is where we're getting to. Go to verse number 12, media team. In 11 and 12, it says, therefore, therefore what, D? Therefore, because of her faith. Therefore, because of her faith. Therefore, because of her one act of faith. She, she didn't have to do 10 acts of faith. Can I, can I talk to you here? Because sometimes we, we come into the church with lofty ideas. And I want you to know, there's nothing wrong with your lofty ideas. It's just sometimes the God is, that we serve is just asking you to do one thing. It's amazing, ministers, that we have people that are talking about all that's wrong and all the 55 things that they want to do. And God is saying, I don't need 55 things. I just need you to do one thing. <laughs> you're talking about what's wrong with your life and when you call your pastor I'm just going to ask did you pray well, well, well you know pastor there's a whole lot of things more than pray no it ain't because uh -uh. if you can't do the one thing you can't expect the two thing and if you can't do the two thing you can't expect the three thing I wish I can help some, get somebody some help in here today I'm just looking for some people that said pastor listen calculus was tough for me modern English was tough for me the Socrates was tough for me I need just one thing to do and I want you to know God is calling you to one act of faith this morning he's saying if you can just step out on faith in this one thing I'm going to open up and I'm going to allow to ricochet throughout your life some stuff that you never could even dream of the Lord is about to blow somebody's wildest dreams out the water because of one act of faith So he puts it this way, Angie. He says, out of one sprang, even out of one, as him as good as dead, so many as the stars in the sky, in the multitude, and as the sand, which is by the seashore innumerable. He says, because of Sarah's one act of faith, it sent a ripple effect through the earth realm, which didn't just bless her, but it blessed somebody else. I want you to understand that when you realize that your one act of faith is not about blessing you, but it's about what God wants to do through you. Am I in the right church? You see, I used to go to God and pray, and I said, Lord, I need you to bless me. Lord, I need you to bless my body. Lord, I need you to bless my finance. Lord, I need you to bless my career. Lord, I need you to 
bless my job. Lord, I need you to bless my mother. And Lord, I need you to bless my father. And Lord, I need you to bless, bless, bless. And that the integral word in all of it, it was about me. It was about bless me. But the Lord speaks back from eternity and says, why bless you? Do you want me to bless you just for you? Hallelujah. And I'm looking at some saints. Uh, they're packed up with all kinds of blessings uh, and they don't even use the blessing. Uh, some of you are spiritual hoarders. Uh, God blesses you and you don't do nothing with it. Uh, he gave some of you a mouth and you won't even praise him. I got to work hard right now. He gave you a body and you won't even use it to give him the glory. God says, I'm tired of spiritual hoarders. He says, Sarah, when I bless you, it's not going to be about you. Your one act of faith is going to allow for, there's more than the stars in the sky. You can't even number them. He told Abraham, go out and look at the sky uh, try to count the stars uh, Abraham said Lord I can't count them all uh, he says that's how many people are about to come from you uh, you said well pastor I'm just a little old nurse uh, so all I do is do my eight and hit the gate uh, I want you to understand you are not a little old nurse uh, the Lord is using you to bless people People, uh, who are going to go out and bless somebody else uh, I'm only preaching to about a hundred of you in here today uh, but look at your neighbor uh, and say God's about to use you uh, he's going to use your one act of faith uh, Kiera I want you to know the anointing is on you daughter uh, and all he's calling for is one act of faith uh, sometimes we want to be popular sometimes we won't lie likes uh, but I want you to know it don't mean nothing if it's not an act of faith uh, I got to preach like I'm going home uh, give somebody a handshake uh, and say God's about to do it uh, I want you to know the prophet is speaking clearly uh, God sent you into this room uh, because he's setting you up for a miracle uh, he has you right where he wants you uh, you're in the place in between doubt uh, and ready to move into faith uh, he says that's right where I want you uh, he says when the praise team was singing uh, and you began to lift up your hands uh, I was setting you up for a miracle uh, but the miracle was not about you uh, it's about what he's about to do through you uh, your children have scholarships waiting for them uh, but you have not executed an act of faith uh, you can't Keep complaining when you go home uh, but God said uh, after this day uh, on oh God uh, on September 10th uh, somebody's gonna leave out of Bethesda uh, and issue an act of faith uh, in fact I got one better for you uh, you can issue the act of faith right now uh, while you're sitting in your seat uh, while you're standing in the chair uh, when you lift up your hands to heaven uh, and say Lord I believe you oh God help me preach now because the Bible says uh, that Sarah now uh, she received strength to conceive uh, Sarah now uh, she's so blessed uh, that out of Sarah comes Isaac uh, out of Isaac comes Jacob uh, out of Jacob comes Judas uh, out of Judas comes Phares uh, out of Phares comes Zayar out of Zayar comes Tamar out of Tamar comes Isram out of Isram comes Aram out of Aram comes Aminadad Aminadad brings forth Nason Nason brings forth Salmon Salmon brings forth Boaz Boaz comes of Rahab Rahab comes to Boaz and Obed Obed comes out of Ruth Ruth now brings Obed to Jesse. Jesse gives birth to 
David. I feel like preaching right now. David gives birth to Solomon. Solomon then has, hallelujah, Rehoboam. Rehoboam then Abia. Abia and Esaba and Joseph and Joram. These are all the generations that came from Sarah till we finally get to Joseph, the surrogate father of Jesus Christ. Because of Sarah's one act, we get Jesus, the son of the living God. If Jesus lives for 33 years, he lived the life of a human in God flesh. But the Bible says that on the third day, after he had been beaten, after he had been crucified, after he had been wounded, he got up on the third day with all power in his hand. That's all because of Sarah. He called his disciples and told them for 40 days. That's all because of Sarah. He had them stay in an upper room for 10 days. But because of the act of Sarah, they were in the upper room. And the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and they were all in one place and suddenly a sound came down from heaven and clothing tongues as of a fire came and set on every one of them and they began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave utterance because of her act the Holy Ghost falls and there's 3,000 souls that heard them speaking in tongues Peter said men and brethren uh, these men are not drunk uh, as ye suppose uh, but this is that uh, which the prophet Joel preached uh, I feel like going crazy here uh, 3,000 souls uh, said what must we do uh, he says repent uh, and be baptized uh, in the name of Jesus uh, for the remission of your sins uh, 3,000 souls came uh, Paul then uh, saw some Samaritans uh, I'm sorry James and John uh, and Simon uh, the Samaritans got saved uh, because of Sarah's act of faith uh, the Ephesians got saved uh, because of Sarah's act of faith uh, you're not going to help me preach uh, the Bible says uh, that in 70 AD uh, the temple was destroyed uh, and all of the prophets uh, they began to scatter uh, we went into a time of persecution uh, but because of Sarah's act of faith uh, you could not block the church uh, we scattered uh, but we still had power uh, it took us through the dark ages uh, where there was no prophetic voice uh, and then Martin Luther stood up uh, and he declared to the Catholic Church uh, that these are what God uh, is supposed to do uh, from Luther we get the Methodist Church uh, from the Methodist this church we get the Baptist church uh, and then we get prophet Parham uh, in the city of Kansas uh, that declared the Holy Ghost can still come uh, and in 1906 uh, on Azusa Street uh, the Holy Spirit fell uh, at that meeting uh, there was G.T. Haywood uh, the prophet uh, and the founder of the P.A.W. Uh, he received the Holy Ghost uh, and started the P.A.W. Uh, the PAW continued on uh, and PL Scott stood up uh, and PL Scott uh, saw Bishop Johnson uh, and sent him out to these plains. Uh, Bishop Johnson goes to Hanford. Uh, Hanford turns into Rose and Grove. Uh, Rose and Grove turns into church. Uh, church turns into White's Bridge. Uh, White's Bridge turns into Millbrook uh, and Dakota. Uh, and in 2010, uh, Bishop called Tobias. Uh, and said I need you to come uh, to pastor the church uh, I came in 2011 uh, and I'm preaching this morning uh, all because of one act of faith uh, who am I preaching to in here today uh, I'm looking for somebody uh, to say I got an act of faith uh, my children will be blessed uh, I gotta do an act of faith uh, I gotta get down on my knees uh, and say, Lord, even though they're clubbing right now, 
I know they gonna be saved. This is my act of faith. I gotta get down on my knees and say, Lord, I'm hurting right now, but this is my act of faith. I give you my praise. I give you my prayer. I give you my hallelujah. I give you my body. I give you my soul. I give you my thank you. I give you my fast in the name of Jesus. So say yeah. One act of faith. Find five people. Say one, one, one. One, one, one. One act of faith can deliver a generation. One act of faith can raise you up. One act of faith can heal your body. One act of faith. One. One. Oh, y'all not moving enough. Find three more people. Say one, one, one. Who am I talking to in here? Stand up all over the house. The reason why Matthew writes the genealogy because he wants us to know you could not be here without an act of faith. Some of you in here are not valuing the fact that your great grandmama said, you know what? I gotta make it to the United States. Things ain't working out where I am. She didn't have YouTube, didn't have Facebook, didn't have Twitter, but she heard something. And she said, I gotta make it, I gotta head north. And your great grandmother left her family behind to fight the terrain to make it to the United States of America. Her one act of faith. She found a little plot, a little land, paid a few hundred dollars for it. It looked like nothing. Her husband was able to come later on. He built a little shack on that little plot of land. They died and gave it to their grandkids. And their grandkids said, this ain't nothing. It's nothing but a little shack. By that time, the grandkids could watch a little TV. And they was watching MTV Cribs. And they decided that their great-grandmother's sacrifice was not good enough for them. And they sold that little plot to an investor who said, if you dumb enough to let this plot go, I'll give you $8,000 for it. The grandkids said, perfect. Give me the 8,000 so I can go out and be fancy. Give me the 8,000 so I can go out and buy whatever I want to buy. Give me the 8,000 so I can buy me some old car, put big rims on it, and play some loud music. And now that same plot of land, they done built Fresno State on it. It would have been worth millions of dollars 
but because you devalued one act of faith. I want you to know the truth can be the same of us in reverse. One act of faith can set up our posterity. And there's nothing more hurtful to a parent than for them to see their kids not valuing the act of faith. Well, God is saying the same to all of us as you stand on your feet. We're going. He's saying, I gave you the story of Sarah to let you know she wasn't popular. She died having one child, but that one child. You don't need 20 pair of shoes. You just need a couple. You need one for the upscale event. Put a little shine on it, my brother. Need a little sneaker keep them cleaned up we used to carry around a toothbrush so we keep our sneakers clean you don't need a bunch of clothes you just need one act of faith and God is calling you higher everyone say higher God is calling you higher today I felt it in my spirit all week when he told me to preach it one he kept emphasizing my dear sister one which means the Lord is not looking for you to do five things this week just one bow your head close your eyes lift your hands Lord we come to you saying Lord forgive us for reaching out to a whole lot of stuff and not reaching for our faith. Lord, we readily admit life is hard and it can distract us, God, from seeing you are in the middle of it. But Lord, the same way you redirected Sarah and gave her the strength, the faith that gave her strength to bring forth, Cause there to be a spirit of bringing forth in this house. Let us see that our one act of faith may save our whole family. Our one act of faith will cause our relatives to start coming to church. Our one act of faith will cause our sons and daughters to come out of the streets and take their inheritance seriously. Our one act of faith can heal not just our body but give us a testimony for other people so that that testimony multiplies and multiplies and multiplies for the saving of the lost that our degree was not about us our degree was about a whole community that needed us we dear Lord God realize that by your calling you have signed us up for miracles and Lord we don't shrink back from it right now we say work through us today and as we step into faith and not fear the same Lord God blessing you gave Sarah which showed 42 and two generations that came from her even leading to your dear son Jesus Christ we believe that you're using us just like that and we thank you for it in Jesus name amen come on celebrate all over the house somebody need to come come on make an act of faith it's good to see mother Lewis is here today too come on somebody need prayer somebody need prayer glory be to God hallelujah And then we're going to go have, we're going to have some food. We're going to eat together. We got all kinds of good stuff. Chris, play one of them old songs that we know. Oh! Oh, 
I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me. Nobody told me. Any more prayer warriors? The road, the road would be. Oh, I don't believe he brought me this far to lead me. Deacon Ola Connie, can you come help us pray? Do we have enough men at the door? Come on. No waste. I come too far from where I started. I started from. Nobody. Nobody told me that the road. church to praise him. Say, I don't, 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 Go with her. We can all that Connie. i 
somebody. I said he brought me too far to leave me. It's too late, devil. I know too much now. Oh, my. Oh, my. He's been a healer. He's been a way maker. He's been a healer, he's a provider, a way maker, a way maker, a way maker, a way maker, brought me over troubled waters, yeah y'all, I said he brought me over troubled waters y'all. Yeah, yeah. I said when nothing else could help I was sinking far from the peaceful shore very very deeply stained I couldn't rise no more but the master I said the master I wish somebody would get with me I said the master the master, master, the master. He, he lived this far. I don't From the waters he lifted me. Can anybody else testify that? I don't I'm from the waters he lifted me. Two people being baptized in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together. Listen. Listen, prepare your offerings all over the house. Prepare your offerings. Your 100% tithe in your liberal gift. Listen, we're going to get ready to go over to the other side and, and fellowship. And, and, and I want to encourage you, don't run to your car. It's safe. The car is safe. I want you to go in and get you a plate. Even if you don't get you a plate, get you some punch. I hope they got punch. Be better if they had Kool-Aid. But this is our first one, y'all, so we going to, you know, if it's little gaps, we'll get it right by the next one. You got to have the Kool-Aid. Hallelujah. Got to have the Kool-Aid. <laughs> Just don't put your hand in, in the thing. Now, yesterday I was getting me some food and a nice young lady, she put on her gloves. Then she started touching everything. Then she went to grab for my food. I said, oh, hold on, dear, hold on, hold on. Can you use some tongs? She said, oh, I just finished washing them. <laughs> I said, I'm so sorry, but can't. I was real sweet to her, you know. You don't want to be rough with the people. They find out you're a pastor. <laughs> I ain't never going to that church. <laughs> but I said, please use the tongs and a spoon. Can you use a spoon to scoop it out? <laughs> but we want to go to the other side. You know, I, when I look at this Southern, I still have all of Bishop's writings dear to me. In the office, I have the shoes he used to like to wear with all of his belts wrapped around it, hanging on the wall. So that when I go in there, I look over and I have a picture frame 
with all of his suspenders. He used to like to wear suspenders. I have a picture frame with all his ties and suspenders there. Y'all know why I do that? To remind me that there was an act of faith that had to take place. And Tobias, you're no different. This generation will have to issue an act of faith just like the previous generations in order for God to get the glory. Come on, can we celebrate Mother Lewis? Amen, you're looking good. Amen. But it's because of people like that that we're all here. Amen, Mother Smith in the back. Come on, get Mother Smith. Mother Linda back there. And, and listen, we, we're going to go, we got two baptisms, but listen. Sometimes the previous generation didn't speak with a lot of words. They spoke with their actions. Isn't that right? We're a generation that like a lot of words, huh? Go up on Google, do, 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 you so smart. The previous generation showed us by their action, your father went to work every day. Every day. He said, well, he wasn't at home enough. Quit acting entitled. He was working, trying to make sure you had everything you needed. And now you start watching these weird shows. I just wish you was here more. Stop it. He had to issue an act of faith. He was hoping you would understand that. That while he was out, he wasn't leaving you. He was trying to provide for you. Come on, stand all over the house. Those of you who are kind enough to wait behind for the baptisms, bless you. Some of you said, Pastor, I want to get my plate first. I said, all right, get your plate first. He said, they're going to be all right. The baptism going to be all right. They're going to be all right. Amen. Because the baptism is always about the soul that's in that water. It's not about the crowd out here. Amen. And we thank God. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise for these two. Every Sunday, we now have 845 service and Sunday school. And on Wednesday, I would love to see all of you in the fellowship hall with me and Elder Randolph as we teach the word of God at 7 p.m. Dear gracious Father, we thank you. You're so good, so kind, so gracious. Thank you for the example of Sarah. <laughs> she laughed at your promise, God, because she looked at her circumstance. And to Lord God, we admit we've done it too. But now, Lord, we seek revelation and we say we got it. And so now we walk out in an act of faith. Cause your people to multiply this week. Cause healing to multiply this week. Use your people to win souls. Dear Lord God, we thank God for outreach teams and evangelism teams. But dear Lord God, cause every individual to be the evangelist. And to win souls back to the house. Now bless our fellowship in the fellowship hall. Bless all the food, dear Lord God. Purify for the nourishment of our body. Let there be no sickness. Let it bring strength to our body. Dear Lord God, those of us who have various conditions, let the food, dear Lord God, not hinder any of that. And let us leave out a stronger church. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Oh, she's in the water. Turn the lights on in the back.